welcome to the TXA Crypto Market Rundown. It's Sunday, so it's that time again. Let's dive right in and let's take a look at Bitcoin and what's going on in the market. So in the past week, um, when we checked in previously, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven candles, here we were. We had crept down out of this tight range area, broken to the downside, broke this little bit of a, a localized kind of a trend line here. I wouldn't call this a trend, but we were holding that direction to the upside. We broke it, and since then we have bounced a little bit. Now it's interesting to note, um, as we have made that move pulling back, so let's just pull some vertical lines here because we really want to nail down when did this movement to the downside take place and when did it stop? Okay, so you can see in this move to the downside, there was a nice little chunk of selling volume, a little spike, not a whole lot of buying on the way down. And then here comes this push up in just the past few days, um, this last week, and a little bit of buying. But notice this buying is lower than the push up that got us to the top of this potentially developing uptrend here. So what is going on? Well, there's a number of things. One, if you've been following along in our Discord, and let me just take a moment, if you're new, if you're watching this for the first time, or you're not already in our Discord, check the links in the description below and make sure you get in there because that's where we discuss things in detail. That's where we talk about how these moves work, other potential possibilities, and where we look at a whole lot of other charts besides just the main market movers. But if you've been following in Discord, I posted a picture of the leverage longs and the leverage short totals at various price points. There was a huge, about $200 million worth of liquidity of longs. And when this price action came down to the 27K area, they were all liquidated in about an hour. So, and I want to say it was in this candle, this final real good push down candle. We had 200 million longs liquidated. Now, why is that significant? When you start to understand how the market works, um, there's a group of people known as market makers. And these are the people that really drive the liquidity in the market. You have them in traditional markets on the NASDAQ and the New York Stock Exchange, and you have them in crypto markets as well. And a lot of the times in crypto markets, your main uh, market makers are the exchanges themselves. And this presents a conflict of interest because exchanges being in an unregulated market and in crypto markets are unregulated for the most part, uh, they have this profit incentive that if they allow traders to trade with leverage and they can see that at a certain price point, $200 million worth of traders will be liquidated, that means their trades are closed and they no longer have those funds. The exchange gets to keep the funds. They have an incentive to push price to that area and liquidate all those traders and keep that money. Well, that was done. Those traders got wiped. And now we have turned back around and we're pushing the upside. We've done this type of a move before. And in Discord earlier this week, I circled this area and I pulled what's known as the bars pattern over here. So if you come over to this area, you can do a bars pattern and that's where whatever you pull the tool from, it replicates that price action so you can see it in another location. I pulled a bars pattern off of this price action and I applied it here and stretched it out a little bit to show what it might look like if we follow that same type of price action. So why do we push down and then push up? When we push down, we liquidate all the leverage longs. And when we push up, we liquidate all the short traders that got in after this dip. So certainly when we made this dip, short traders opened new positions. And now as we're pushing up, we're getting near the area where those traders will also be liquidated. And that's why a lot of the times you see this type of price action. Exchanges make a lot of money in that up-down volatility from traders who aren't very experienced using leverage. If you take a leverage position out and you leverage 10 times, that means if the market moves 10% against your trade where you opened it, you get liquidated and you lose all of your money. For the most part, that's a simple definition. You can add to margin and you can stretch it, but just assume if you open a trade at 10 times, that's, that's gonna liquidate anybody um, with a 10% move of the market. So we look up here and we see if we followed this type of price action relative to where we did in the past, if we saw Bitcoin push up a good 10% to this 32K area, anybody who is short, 10 to 20 times, and we could go down here and do it, it's about 20%. Anybody that is short 
excuse me, five times leverage or more from this area would be liquidated. The exchanges would keep their funds and it would be a great day for market makers. Now, if you go and look at the leverage positions right now, there is another about 250 million leverage longs at the lower end of 27K yet again. So a bunch of people saw this buying, got back in with leverage longs. And if we turn price back down and get to this area another time, they will be liquidated again. Why is all of this important? So circle back to where has Bitcoin been the last week? Where is it going in the next week? Well, most of the pain right now for the market, and that means most of where people stand to lose money and give it over to exchanges, is on the long side of trades, which means price going down will make more money for the big players of the market. That gives us a huge incentive and a reason for price to come back down and check in below. Now, keep in mind, when they do these types of moves, they tend to be quick, violent, and they turn around quickly and violently because that makes it difficult. It makes a time frame very small for leverage people to take their positions, close them in profit. And that's the goal of the exchanges and the market makers. They don't want a lot of people to make a lot of money with those leverage trades. So they have to do it quickly, close a lot of trades on one side, push back the other direction and close the rest on the other. And they get to keep the money from both directions. Bitcoin is sitting right at the bottom of this tight range area that we broke out of. So far, this is what we would call a break a hook back up. Now we are at that kind of resistance point. If we break above it, expect to pop pretty good. If we don't, that will give us the resistance of a lower high to really open up this move down to the bottom of this potential uptrend line. That 23 to 24K area is still on the table. And for me personally, that is the most probable move next for Bitcoin to come and check in around 23, 24, or 25K, somewhere in this zone down below that's going to take out most of the leverage longs. It's going to give the market makers a chance to clean up any of this liquidity down here that might be stuck upside down in the books. And it's going to give us a chance to really check in with support and potentially open up a lot of alt trading opportunities. So a lot of reasons why we may go down from here and why I personally, this is not financial advice, I'm not a financial advisor, but that's why I am expecting Bitcoin to go down to this area in the very near future. It didn't happen this past week, but the more we push up on low volume and get stuck in these resistance points, the more I see that probability on the table ahead. It feels like we're getting closer. Now, if that doesn't happen, the other possibility is checking in with this resistance point up above at 37K. But we've got a lot more work to do to get through to that area than we do to slip back down and really cause some fear in the retail market. But that's where the opportunities lie for us as traders and investors. So Bitcoin, give it to us. We are waiting patiently. We are watching and we are not being irrational or emotional about this. We're ready for it as soon as it comes. Until then, all we do is we wait and calculate. And if we have any positions open that made profit on this little move in the last week up, and you're in any kind of double digit profit, that's when you have to ask yourself, if the risk is to the downside that I give this all up, I should have a stop loss at least at break even, even more preferably in profit. And if, if I'm not sure how to do that, I don't know what that means. That's when I'm looking, can I take enough off to get my initial capital back and ride the rest for free no matter where Bitcoin goes next. Ethereum kind of doing that same move, a little more aggressive of a move on Ethereum in terms of doing this um, initial pop-up, pop back down and bounce. You don't really see quite um, as, as pronounced of a push up on Bitcoin here. We got a similar push, but not as pronounced as it is on this F chart. And in fact, you can see that's why F Bitcoin went up in that move because Ethereum pushed harder than Bitcoin did. But just in the last week, you can see this recovery has not been as strong for F as it has been for Bitcoin. There's about a 4% differential there. So that means Bitcoin pushed up about 4% off of the low of that dip um, in the past week, more than Bitcoin did. So if we go back, we can measure from the bottom of this in the last week, Bitcoin's done about nine and a half, 10-ish percent. Ethereum has done about four and a half. So there's where your differential comes in. That's why F Bitcoin pushed down. And you can see we're still holding above this 618. 
still kind of holding this low area here. And now we've broken out of that. We can kind of just look at this as, as a potential support point in terms of F's relative strength to Bitcoin. If it starts to slip too much, we could see F start to tumble pretty hard relative to Bitcoin. So we're hoping they kind of hold together and we kind of move sideways on this chart. The DXY we looked at a week ago is in the exact same spot. So in the grand scheme of things, what has changed? Not a whole lot. This is not a super exciting week roundup, but it's important we keep our eye on everything and we keep a clear head. You can see the S&P in the last week took a dip and bounced back on the last two days of the week. So kind of remains unchanged since the last time we looked at it as well. Dow Jones Industrial Average, the same kind of play. So all of the markets kind of did a, a, a down up or an up down and they're kind of sitting where they were a week ago. We will do this again next Sunday. We'll continue to do this every week. If you liked this little quick explanation as to what's happened in the past week and where we're going next week, be sure to tune in next Sunday for another follow-up in our Market Roundup series. And even more importantly, check the link in the description below and make sure you get into our Discord server. That's where the magic happens. That's where the in-depth discussion comes into play. That's where you can ask important questions and get some pretty detailed answers from members of the community that have been following all kinds of charts across all of these markets for a very long time. Thanks everyone for watching and we'll see you again next week.